to another how-to video and today y'all we are going to be doing the Bindle Noble. Now, this one I was really excited to do. That and the Germanic players, but I think we gotta talk about our Bindle brethren here. Now, if anybody loves the Bindle period as much as I do, click that bow button as well. Also hit that subscribe button as well. Well, also click that the like video. Uh, but yeah, so what was the Vindal period and what was the Vindal Noble, you might ask? Well, to me, the Vindal period is the golden age of the Dark Ages. It is the migration era of the many Germanic tribes, or Scandinavian tribes, that migrated further south into parts of Europe from Scandinavia and such. These would have included part people such as the Lombards, Goths, Visigoths, Astrogoths, the Franks, the Danes, it would have been the Carolingian Empire, the, well, infamous uh, Saxons, Jutes and Angles, and pretty much, well, we will. Now, many people do ask, though, to bar how come I don't know much, uh, we don't know, have that much information on the Vindal period? Well, quite simple, uh, mostly because the Vindal period was the downfall of the said Roman Empire, or the Western Roman Empire, and in doing so, the uh, information was kind of sadly lost to history. Now, our only best way of knowing the history of the Vindal period is actually from archaeology. That's right, archaeology is our best way to understand, well, history of the said Vindal period. In fact, more than a couple of hundred times we actually do discover historical artifacts and such of the Vindal period. Now, the equipment I'm wearing is a mix of what they would have worn. Now, I am just, well, many people would say, Templar, you kind of stand out like a sore thumb. That's what was the purpose of these guys. The Vindal nobles during the time, Vin nobles during the Vindal period, wanted to stand out to show their opponent that to awe them from afar and sort of to make them jealous. Now, the equipment I'm wearing is mostly that of male. However, underneath this, I'm wearing the jerkin. Plus, I'm wearing this beautiful designed helmet, which I had to get a guy to make this. Love it, by the way. It is beautiful. It is ornate. Now, sometimes they would even be broidered and crested with beautiful artwork like this. So, it depended on the person's wealth. Uh, but as well, I'm wearing plate armor only on my head, my arms, and my legs. The rest is male. Now, there is actually a thing... Now, uh, when it came to helmets, I do have to put out here. Helmets were... A large variety in designs. What I mean by large and variety? Simple. There was more than one design variant. For example, there, the, it's actually stated that they took uh, helmets from the design of the Romans, especially the cavalier helmets that they wore, and designed them off and created their own variation, such as a Spangen helmet as we see right now. Now, there are also accounts of the infamous uh, Sutton Hoo helmet, for example, which is which is probably the most beautifully badass looking helmet I had to put out here. That is probably the most beautiful helmet I've ever seen of the Vindal period. Uh, there are also accounts of even male covered helmets that actually covered the face, but it varied on region to region. However, one major thing is also clear and simple is that there was the Golden Age that it was called is because reason being it was somewhat of the golden age it had beautiful works of art in its own type of manner such as on helmets their swords everything in fact it's actually stated that germanic style or uh, this vindal period or early dark ages style swords copied from the roman spatha like this one here now this one is beautifully decorated to shine on the battlefield to awe my opponent from afar this is, this is how cool these things are. But yeah, I love the Vindal period. Now, I'm dressed as the noble during the time of the Vindal age. And these guys would, most likely, uh, you would actually find burial sites of them in places like parts mostly in England or Denmark. Mostly not anywhere in Southern Europe. But the weird thing is, during the migration era, these guys mostly migrated a little slightly further south or as well parts into England. Or into the modern day England. Back then though, it was known as Britannia. 
Now, though, there are different variations on the sword design. Some of them were beautifully ornate beyond measure. But, yeah. Uh, but I want to put this out here. This is not the only style of armor they would have also worn. Now, I am wearing mail, but I tried to find, I tried my best to find armor like this. I could not find this. This is a very rare thing, sadly, and it's a very shame that I couldn't find this online for anybody to make. But apparently, this was actually cost a king's ransom. And this would have been worn by, uh, well, great chieftains and such. And the weird thing is, this is actually attached to the mail. This is actually like what you would call like a mail uh, coating on top that which would then actually be attached to the said plates, or the plates would be attached to the mail. In other words, it would be like an early variation of brigandine. So in other words, this thing was meant to stop cutting weapons, even an axe. And the fact is, I would actually have to say that is probably the most beautifully badass thing I've ever seen. And majority of our discoveries of armor like this is very rare. Some accounts also state that some of the armor was so badly degraded that it was uh, can't be shown. I can understand that. However, it's even stated that even the shields would be beautifully decorated with gold, silver, and including uh, even jade sometimes. One major example is the Sutton Hoo shield. Now, though, there is also accounts that even the brooches they wore uh, actually even had jade as far from Ch as China. So that's saying something of how far their trade network was. And many people do wonder, though, of how rich these guys were. Well, that's to say they were extremely, and I mean extremely rich. Now, why am I wearing this pelt here, you might ask? Well, simple. I, I think it wouldn't actually look as, as good without the pelt, because one, wouldn't this thing look a lot more badass with the pelt on there rather than with me just wearing a cape or whatever? My thoughts exactly. Now, though, many of y'all would probably also ask, but Templar, what are the best ways to understand the, well, Vindal period? Well, that's a good question, and that's actually with sagas. Mainly the best and most infamous saga that was actually in history was actually the tale of Beowulf. That's right, the Beowulf saga pretty much had armor just like this. In fact, I wish that, I think it was 2014, that animated movie, that, which well, I still hate that beyond measure, that is bad acting, bad uh, look for history and sagas, and they didn't even follow the saga correctly, so yeah. Uh, but I wish they had put more historical equipment on there. Now, if you all want to see a film that has historical armor, such as, like, what I'm somewhat wearing, I highly recommend Beowulf and Grendel. That actually does its best to put historical equipment on there. Or, as well, one of my favorites, the animated saga of Beowulf, which is... I think I, I like that one a little more. I don't know why. That's just me. Uh, but... There is also major accounts on the design variation on their equipment and armor. Some accounts even state that the armor was faulty or it wasn't that great. It varies from person to person. Honestly, if you ask me, it looks a lot more badass than some of the armor we later see from the high medieval period. Because, yeah, I'm mostly a Dark Ages guy, okay? Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but now there are also many accounts that also state that this armor and equipment is seen as far as parts of northern Russia, or in this case near St. Petersburg, when they were constructing the canals and as well the city itself. So that's actually kind of impressive. Now, there are actually um, two other type of movies I could actually recommend. Well, actually, a movie and a video game I could recommend that does show historical armor. And that would be one for the video game. It would be actually also uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, uh, I'm not much of a fan of the Valhalla when it was early on, especially with all the junk armor you were getting. But as soon as they had that tour browser and they added in the Vindal-style equipment, oh, that was perfect. 
I especially love the helmet they you get for Abor. Now, uh, technically though, I wish they had a little more. Now there is another one, but apparently you gotta buy it with their helix points or whatever. I kind of like it, so yeah. Uh, I just really hate the cloaks in that. I really wish they would keep the mantles, but not the cloak. Uh, but as well, when it comes to the movie, I would highly recommend watching uh, the movie The Northmen. The Northmen, you actually see a Viking style or a uh, period burial, which is actually what I love about the Vindal period. The Vindal period is beyond badass and awesome. And the fact is, they even show the beautiful long ship that they would have been buried in. So they get huge points for that. But now, why don't we get started, shall we?
Now, as you all saw me moving around with this equipment, I am not feeling fatigue, I am not feeling uh, problematic with my equipment. This is why I kind of like mail. Mail is meant to form to the body. Not as much as I like plate armor, but you gotta admit, this was kind of a good idea to do. Now, the weird thing is, while fighting this equipment, I don't feel fatigued. The only problem is, is this fur on here is kind of restricting my uh, AC to myself, myself. But what can you do? Uh, style, okay? <laughs> now, did the Vindal Mobiles wear this stuff when they were on the battlefield? Uh, maybe, maybe not. It's still left unknown. Because my best bet, probably not. Because one, they didn't want to be as restricted, so that's why I mostly leave my right arm fully open. So yeah, while the pelt is on my left side, which means it's a little bit more protection. Now there are variations of historical accounts that state that these guys would have been incredibly hard to kill. Now I can see why even uh, the infamous J.R.R. Tolkien got inspired from the Beowulf saga, because one, these guys are awesome looking. Now, if y'all had a helmet that I should have worn, like, that, like if y'all believe I should have worn one of the different helmets, let me know down in the comments below. Because I, I still feel this one was needed for this, because one, it looks awesome. Uh, it's just, just the feel of it and the look of it with the fur. Well, actually, I think any one of them, especially the Roman style helmet. But even also, I was wanting to find a decorated Roman helmet. Sadly, those are very hard to find. So yeah, I was wanting to put it on there, especially for this look. But as I said, those are extremely hard to find, so yeah. But yeah. Uh, if any of y'all have any ideas of historical warriors in history that you want me to do, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be happy to add them to the list and the pile. Hopefully during March we will be getting into the uh, Celtic nobles, or as well, I will be going back to the Gallo Glass and probably back to the House Carl because apparently YouTube is getting stating copyright claims and all that. So yeah, uh, but what can you do? It's YouTube. It's problematic, I know. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below of what warrior in history you all want me to do, especially before Christmas comes up, because one, we actually have Yorkfiel or coming up, or Yule's Day, in which is traditionally Germanic or Vikingish. So I might be doing the Gothic Warrior maybe soon, or maybe I'll be doing the Frankish. It's up to y'all what I should be doing next. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more, and help us chat.